Hey guys, I'm Lena. Welcome to my All Analog Photography channel. You would have never guessed what is in this tiny little box if you have not read the title of this video, which you probably have. And still, it is amazing that something as major as an enlarger can fit into a box small like this. I have to be honest, I did watch reviews from uh, other colleagues uh, from YouTube, mainly because I didn't want to repeat whatever have been said before. And also I wanted to learn how to set it up faster, not to lose time. So I will leave links to those videos below and uh, you can watch those videos too and see what uh, the guys had to say. Now, let's have a look. I'm excited to see what's in the box and then I'm gonna tell you what I am planning to do with this enlarger. But first I want to open it. Where is the cutter? I have not unpacked it on purpose because I want to see it first here in front of the camera. Okay, here we have uh, all the plugs, all the possible plugs. Aha, uh -huh, that's the one I will be using. That's really great. One in every country I go to, I can use this enlarger. Now, what is here? Aha, uh -huh, those are the formats. Basically, the enlarger does 35 millimeter and medium format up to six by nine by popular request. Oh, those are so nicely made. And of course, without glass, which is really great because glass is just a collector of dust and nothing else. What is this? What is this material? It is like tape, but it's not tape. It's, it's stronger than tape. It holds very, very well. Those two parts together, it's like a little book. Okay, what's next? You know, in Soviet times, there were those enlargers that fit in a little suitcase and then you open the suitcase and you have the enlarger with a column and with the easel right in there. You know what? In real life, it's even smaller than on videos. Okay, it looks like it is 3D printed. I, at least I can see the layers. This is nice aluminum. The baseboard is very well attached. This whole thing is very well made. It feels very sturdy. You can tell that Intrepid has a lot of experience making quality cameras. The bellows are very, very well made. Okay, what, what else is in my box? There is something else in the box. Uh -huh, more bubble wrap. This is nice. Also sides look 3D printed, but guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure at least what I saw, what is 3D printed is done exactly like this. Good quality and it gives this really, really nice silky finish. Ah, this I have seen in the review, this safe light here. Oh, that I want to test if it fogs paper. That will be my first test. Now, this little cute thing, I absolutely love it. I will already say something. I prefer when things are written or at least some symbols. It would be really, really nice. Are the buttons 3D printed? Yes, buttons are also 3D printed. Ah, oh, that is just so cute. This is such a toy. But what I want to know, how much of a serious machine this little toy is. I will also measure the color spectrum of this LED light source for black and white printing, obviously, even though this in logic can do color printing. I'm not an expert in this and someone else should be talking about it. I will be talking only about black and white and especially in relation to the multi-grade papers. It can be a paper of any brand, but uh, Ilford was kind enough to send me even more papers as if I don't buy them anyway all the time. So I'm really happy to have more always. They are always used. And Ilford also stuck me with some chemistry. So we're gonna put it all to use right now. The first thing I tested was the safety of the safe light. I did a variation of the coin test because I couldn't find any coins. So I used vintage Ilford film canisters instead. Five minutes at a distance of 15, 30 and 45 centimeters from the light, the paper remained perfectly white and I could not see even a glimpse of the circle from the canister. 
operating the controls was extra easy you can tell they were designed by people who actually print and not just create something theoretically functional without having the real printing experience Next thing I looked into was how the contrast filters perform. Before we jump to the conclusions, here is the theory. Multigrade paper consists of three layers, but for the sake of simplification, we look at two. Silver halides in one layer are sensitized to blue light only, and in other two, which in this picture are united into one, to both blue and green. The blue light hits blue sensitized silver halides and creates a high contrast image. A green light hits only the layers with green sensitizer and the image is softer. Filters work by cutting off the opposite of the desired color. For example, to let only blue light through, green is being shut off by the magenta color of filter 5. To let only green through, a yellow filter, which stops the blue spectrum, is used. The multigrade filters, after many years of research and refinement, were tailored to work specifically with Ilford papers and their sensitizers. In order to not trigger the green sensitized silver halides, the spectrum has to peak somewhere around 430-450 nanometers in the pure blue range. This peak is not a problem for a traditional light bulb, because it emits an absolutely full spectrum. But this is a reason why I'm always saying to never ever, please never, use LED light bulbs from regular stores. Their spectrums are extremely unpredictable, they're not precisely controlled, they peak all over the place, and you might get lucky, but you might not get lucky. The approach with two LED lights is dramatically different. It is using pure blue and green lights in different proportions, creating all the steps in between filters 0, 0 and 5, from deadly flat to harsh and contrasty. But the biggest problem in this whole story is a high-quality, controlled, pure blue LED light. I tested at least a hundred light sources in my life, and much of the search was dedicated to finding an LED that would go over to 440 nanometers. The one used in the Intrepid and Lodger is hitting more something like 460 nanometers. I will do an example with my reference negative, which prints the full range of tones from lightest whites to deepest blacks with a filter 2 without extra manipulations. This is a filter 5 with a LED light source. And this is a filter 5 from an old light source. As you can see, the dark parts of the bottom rows are same, but the normal light bulb blew the highlights and even the midtones completely, while an LED still prints them, which means its blue spectrum is moved a little bit more towards the green, is triggering more of the green sensitized silver highlights, and thus you are getting a flatter image. The filter 00 prints are of course identical and all the steps between filter 00 and 4 are pretty much same. I did communicate this to the Intrepid guys and since what I have is just a prototype, I gave them an optional LED to try and incorporate into their future enlargers. But this is not a guaranteed success because what you see in the specifications of a light source on paper and in reality sometimes differs and sometimes a lot. This is something you should simply be aware of when buying any LED enlarger for any price. An old light bulb is harder to find, it heats up, needs changing, the larger hat has to be big for diffusing light, but it guarantees to give you the highest contrast in return. An LED light source is slim, doesn't heat up, lasts forever, needs no gelatin filters, uses minimal electricity, but you do sacrifice the highest grade. But honestly, how often do you reach to a filter 5 anyway? This must be a quite badly exposed negative. By all the characteristics, LEDs are the lights of the future. We just need to study them better for darkroom use. Frank, if I saw this enlarger on the internet, it's very likely I would have not bought it simply because I have a whole darkroom of enlargers. But I have to say now I'm thinking it's so small, it's so lightweight, I can set it up on a tripod from my camera. I can even take it with me and print in a hotel room if necessary. So I'm very happy that I got it. And you guys, even if 
you already have an enlarger and you don't really want to buy another one in any case the intrepid guys really deserve all our support they are doing something so important for the analog community entry level enlargers for beginners that you can set up in the smallest spaces i mean don't we all want that there are more people who are enjoying analog of course the kickstarter campaign is launching march 19th i believe so if you guys could visit their page and share it to people who might be interested in this little device that would be really awesome on that note i'm finishing this video thank you so much guys for watching subscribe to my channel if you have not done this already and follow me on instagram and tiktok and see you in the next video bye